Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about using spatial analysis in strategic decision making. But before we start, there are a few things I'd like to say. First, even though we will mainly talk about public health in this talk, I am in no way, shape or form an expert in public health. Therefore, I can only take the easy questions that you have at the end. If you have any difficult question, I have a friend in the audience, Dr. Boni Ale, who is an expert. He will be happy to answer all your very difficult questions. <laughs> okay, so a little bit about me. This is my family. I am a Christian by faith. Uh, I am uh, an Ivorian and also a Cameroonian through my mom. A husband and a father, as you can see on this picture on the left. Uh, my main uh, uh, job is that I am a, an economics professor at Louisiana Tech University, which is a university uh, in the state of Louisiana in the United States. Uh, but I'm also a data science trainer. I also do some consulting work in the field of data science and economics. But enough about me. Let's talk about you now. So what is it about you that we need to talk about? Well, congratulations. You have just been designated as the country's Minister for Health. This is very exciting, but you are now facing two main challenges. Number one, you are inexperienced. Number two, a global pandemic just broke out. So the future of the nation is in your hands, especially uh, health-wise. Okay, so this, once again, is the context for this talk. And since we're talking about using spatial analysis for strategic decision making, it's important to mention that saying strategic decision making is extremely vague because a strategy uh, or strategies can be applied in many, many different contexts. Uh, but the context that we're using right now is public health, you know, and healthcare in general. Uh, but hopefully, uh, even with this very specific example, you will be able to draw out important lessons. Uh, that you can apply in your own field if uh, public health is not your field, like it is not my field. So as the minister, you have a strategy board. You're trying to basically make a roadmap of how uh, you're going to handle and tackle this situation. So number one, you are new. Remember, you are inexperienced, and then the global pandemic just broke out. So you need to make an assessment of the state of things, okay? You're new, you don't know what has been going on, so you basically need to make that assessment right away before determining the way forward. So we're gonna do it in three parts. Number one, where are all the health sites in the country? And Mark, who is in the chat as well, I believe is re really happy about the term health sites uh, because you know, some of the data that is used here is actually from the website that uh, he, uh, he manages. So what are all the health sites? Because we need them, you know, in the strategy that we are going to, to implement to protect our people from that global pandemic that just broke out. Number two, do we have enough appropriate health sites? Because, you know, even if there's a cure, you know, uh, for that disease that is spreading very quickly, and not all health sites have the appropriate equipment to store and handle that cure. You know, it might be a vaccine or it might be, you know, any type of drug that you can think about. So in all the health sites that we have, uh, what are the sites, the health sites or health facilities that are, you know, appropriate for storing and handling? And number three, and uh, we're going to see what health districts are in a second, which health districts do not have appropriate health science, okay? So this is the first step of our strategy. Uh, now, I am actually going to be uh, doing some, I won't say live coding because I've actually uh, written all the code already. So I have about 300 lines of code. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time, uh, you know, explaining every single little detail of the code. Uh, and when you have the code, because it's going to be made available to you, you can spend as much time as you need to try to understand it, uh, but I'm actually basically going to give you the, the main idea. Okay, all right, so I'm actually going to switch to our studio. 
Uh, will you please uh, confirm that uh, the font size is big enough for everybody? Can you see what is written on the screen? Yes, no, no, we can. Yeah, it looks oh. good. good. Okay, perfect. All right. So um, I start by loading the packages. Uh, you know, the, the function library is used usually to, to load libraries. I like to use pload because when you use pload, uh, if it's a package installed from CRAN, uh, if the package is not already installed, it will install it automatically for you, you know, without you having to go back and, uh, you know, entering install the packages and whatnot. Now, this line of code, I said I was not going to go into details, but this I think is important. Uh, this line of code means that I want the interactive uh, mode of TMAP. So I'm going to be showing you some maps. And since we are kind of discussing, I don't want my maps to be static. I want them to be interactive so we can discuss about them. All right. Now, everything else, I try to write as many comments as possible. Well, so what I do here is essentially loading the data. Okay, that's essentially what I do. I have a, a bunch of data sets uh, that I was able to gather from the internet. Uh, the very last slide in the presentation has the sources. And I was actually fortunate enough to actually uh, have, uh, or I am fortunate enough to have uh, an epidemiologist in my close circles who actually also gave me access to, to data. He chose to, to remain anonymous, but I would like to thank him uh, for, for giving me the data. Okay, so remember that's our first, the first step of our strategy. We want to, uh, uh, you know, make an assessment of the state of things. So. Uh, in terms of health facilities in the country. So that's basically what we try to do here. All right. So using the data, okay, uh, we are first try to map all the health facilities in the country. By the way, the country is Cote d'Ivoire. I didn't uh, mention it, uh, but you are now the Minister for Health in Cote d'Ivoire. So this is a very you know, quick map, and you can see that there are a whole lot of health facilities in the country. They are all over the place. The question, however, is even though there are many health facilities, are they appropriate? You know, uh, like we said before, can they handle the cure? Can we store and handle the cure at these facilities to distribute the cure to or the vaccine, or whatever you want, uh, to the people around? That's the question. So this is map number one uh, in trying to assess the state of things. Okay, now I am going to add a, another spatial layer. Uh, I'm going to map the health facilities, but map the health districts as well. So let me zoom in. Now you see that you have little uh, smaller uh, regions or polygons, and these are known as health districts. And a health district is essentially an administrative unit, uh, which is created, you know, by the ministry, you know, uh, so that uh, you know they can focus a, a little more on on smaller portions uh, or, or smaller uh, uh, territorial units, I would say, uh, rather than focusing on the other on, on the entire country. And every health district has a leader and a team, and it makes uh, you know the management of people a little easier. You know when the scope is a little more reduced. So we see that we have some health districts here and. Uh, we see that every single health district has, uh, you know, uh, several health sites, which is actually exciting. So it, it doesn't matter what health, uh, what health district you belong to, there are several health sites. But we still have that question, remember, are these appropriate though? And that's, that's the issue. Uh, we're going to get to that. Okay, so now that we know that we have a lot of uh, health sites, uh, we want to determine where the appropriate health sites now. That's what we are going to do. Uh, now, uh, in this data set, which I was able to get from, uh, uh, from the, the site, the website that, that Mark uh, manages, which is uh, healthsites.io, uh, I was able to get that data set. And this is a very quick bar chart showing the different types of uh, health facilities, okay? Uh, now, they are labeled a pharmacy. Of course, a pharmacy is a health facility, right? But it is not a health facility that is going to help us because uh, that's not where you store vaccines to kind of distribute, even though, you know, you can basically do that if you want. Uh, uh, but the health facilities that we are going to focus on are 
you know, those that are labeled doctors, okay, because they know what they're doing, okay, these are facilities with medical doctors in them and hospitals, okay. And actually, we're going to include clinics, even though most clinics are private. Uh, we're talking about a global pandemic, right? So we need to make a partnership with the private sector uh, so that they can help us fight that pandemic, okay? And of course, a dentist is not really going to help us in that situation, all right? And some uh, health facilities were not labeled at all, right? So what we want to do is we want to focus on doctors, hospitals, and clinics, okay? And so let's do that and let's see what the new distribution is now. And I basically use a filter, you know, uh, in the tidyverse uh, to get that. Now, the, that's, that's the first level of appropriateness. You know, it needs to be doctors, hospital, or clinic. But then the data set also has a variable called completeness. And completeness is, uh, from my understanding, a variable that uh, speaks about uh, the infrastructure which is available within the health site, within the the clinic or the hospital, right? And to be honest with you guys, uh, uh, completeness is actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's a wide range. And when it comes to the health sites that we're dealing with, you know, the completeness uh, for most health sites is actually very low. And over here, I am actually picking 20 as the cutoff uh, level, just for me to have as many health sites as possible because when you move a little higher, then you lose most health sites. But just for the sake of the presentation, I just cut it up at 20, even though in reality, uh, it may be that uh, a health site with a completeness of 20 is not good enough for the storage and uh, the handling of, of, the, of the cure. Remember, this is strategic decision-making. So all these things have to be taken into consideration, all these parameters. Again, for the sake of our story today, let's just say 20 is okay. And let's make a map. So you see, from having a country full of red dots, now we have a country that is not full of red dots. And even the red dots that are present are all clustered. Okay. And you know, these are health sites, but you can definitely tell from this map where the most the biggest cities in the country are located, because that's exact, this is exactly where these. Uh, health facilities are okay. Uh, so uh, now the you know the, the 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 outlook on things is not as positive as when we started because you know we had all these red dots everywhere, uh, thinking that well there are health sites so it's not going to be a problem like reaching out to the people and administering the cure or whatever you know it's not going to be a problem. Now we have some serious concerns. How are the people over here? You know, how are the people over here going to get the cure, you know, with this global pandemic? What about the people here? You know, what about the people here? Well, it's your job. You are now the minister for finance, right? So you have to come up with a strategy. Uh, so let's, let's continue. Okay. All right. Now, uh, uh, the, the, the third step, you know, when we're looking at the strategy board was to determine the health districts with no appropriate health sign. In other words, most health districts, okay, but we want to find out who, uh, uh, the, you know, what health districts they are, uh, those health districts with no uh, appropriate health signs. So uh, it's basically uh, doing a spatial intersection. So what I basically did was uh, the health districts are spatial units called polygons, okay, and the health sites are spatial units called points, all right. So I kind of uh, did a special intersection to find out where, uh, in, in which polygons do we find the points representing the appropriate health sites, okay? So this is a special intersection and I kind of work with the resulting data, okay, to get this. All right. So now you can see that when the color is a little more, uh, you know, a little more pronounced, you have some appropriate health facilities in these health districts. But uh, even though the, you know, the gradient here says zero to one, I can assure you that, you know, it's mostly zero, as you could see yourself earlier in the previous map that I showed you. 
Now, the capital city of, of Cote d'Ivoire is Abidjan, and this is where Abidjan is located. So this is the whole Abidjan area. And of course, this is where, uh, you know, you have most, most health science. Uh, of course, the, the color is kind of lighter than it is here, but you should see all these, you know, this cluster of health, health districts, they are all within the same region. So if you sum everything up, you will have uh, more health district than even here. Okay. Now, San Pedro, that's another health district in Cote d'Ivoire where, where there's a harbor. So it's another main city in Cote d'Ivoire. And you have a few other health districts that you can see here, uh, basically. Okay, guys. So again, the story is not as, you know, happy as, as, as it was when we started. There's a lot of work to do. There's, there's much because if we don't do anything, it's a pandemic, right? It is spreading. If we don't do anything quickly, if we don't do good strategic decision making, our people are going to suffer. Okay, so what can we do now? All right, now that we have an assessment of the state of things. Okay, so let me switch very quickly to uh, the slides. Now we're going to do capacity building. Okay, so we know for a fact that there are many health sites all over the place but they are not appropriate, okay? They don't, they cannot handle our cure. So what we can do is, is let us try to upgrade some of them because I mean, we already have buildings and rooms and things like that. Maybe we should invest in upgrading those so that, you know, they will become appropriate and they will be able to handle and, and store the, the cure that we're talking about. So how are we going to go about it? Because in every health district, there are many, health facilities. So how are we going to go about it? Number one, for each health district, let's try to find the most ideal location for uh, a, a health site you know, that can receive the cure. Uh, and most ideal may mean many things, but for the sake of the presentation, we'll just say that the most ideal is one that is close to what we call a centroid. And we're going to talk about what a centroid is in a second for those who do not know what it is. Now, once we find the most ideal location, we're going to try to determine which already existing health facility is closest to that optimal ideal location. And that health facility that is closest, we're going to upgrade that one, you know, for it to be the health facility for the health district. Okay, so that's uh, what we're going to do. And then we're going to find out, that's a very important question as you'll see, of course, we've seen that there are a few health districts that have appropriate health facilities or health sites, but these appropriate health sites, are they optimally located? Are they in locations that people can easily have access to? During a pandemic, you know, you want the cure to be uh, easily accessed. If it is, if you cannot conveniently access the cure, you're going to have a problem. People are going to maybe you know, uh, say, oh, you know, let me go next week because it is too far. And before next week comes, they catch the virus or the bacteria or whatever, and then they transmit it to other people and we have another problem. So in your strategy, you need to make sure that optimal location is a thing, okay? All right, so, and which health districts are completely okay? So uh, which, uh, what are the health districts in our country that do not need any intervention from us, okay? So that's what we're going to do in the second part of our strategy. All right, so let me switch back to our studio. So that's capacity building. All right, so our, the first step, remember, was to determine the most ideal location for uh, a, a health facility in each health district. So let's do that with this code. So basically, we use the ST centroid function on the polygon and it's like magic, you know, you just apply the ST centroid function and it will tell you where the centroid of that uh, health district, uh, that polygon more generally, it will tell you where that centroid is. So that's basically what I do here and I map it. Okay, so the green dots that you see now, oops, well, you're not seeing them yet. Uh oh, just a second, sorry. Let me clean up everything from here. The joys of running code live. All right. 
Uh oh, okay, there's something that is going on. Well, it was working perfectly before that. Okay, let me just reset my R session and then rerun everything. And hopefully everything works. Once again, the joys of running code live. This is one of the most dangerous things to do <laughs> in, a, in a talk. Okay, so the code is just being run. It doesn't take much time. There's nothing that takes a lot of time. Uh, okay, let's try that again. Okay, great, we're back. Wonderful. Okay, so all the green dots that you see are the centroids for each health district. So a centroid is essentially the middle point. You know, it is calculated in a way, but it is the middle point of a uh, health district. So we just let's assume for the sake of this presentation that the middle point is the most optimally located health site. Okay, and and the green points are the the, the centroids. The, the the red points are still those appropriate health size that we determine there. So these health size that are shown in red, they can handle the cure without any problem. Okay, so that's what we have here. Of course, the centroid is not necessarily the most optimal location for anything at all, uh, due to the fact that, you know, it could be a river, it could be like the middle of a river or something like that, and then it cannot be an appropriate location. Or let's look at this health district, for example. Let's assume that, you know, the yeah, half of this health district is a, a rainforest and there is nobody living there. And most people live in that top part. If that is the case, then you know having a, a health site right in the middle here will not make sense. But again, we're not taking all these considerations for the sake of this presentation, but it is important to understand that in strategic decision-making, whether it is in healthcare, which is not public health, which is not my field or anything else, uh, many factors uh, have to be taken into consideration. Okay, all right, so step number one done, basically. So these are the most optimal locations. Now, the next step is, remember we have a lot of health facilities all over. We want to find out in each health district, which health site or health facility is the closest to that centroid and we're going to pick that one as the facility that we need to upgrade, you know, uh, to serve the people within that health district. So that's basically what we want to do. And there's going to be a bit of machine learning going on here. You know, there's this package uh, called NNGO. Uh, I'm going back just so I can show you. Uh, and it is used for K nearest neighbors. Uh, for those of you who have a little bit of experience in machine learning, this is a very common kind of uh, ML algorithm, uh, and you can do it with spatial stuff as well. Uh, and and the, the function is implemented in a very incredible way. It's extremely fast, uh, especially because what I'm needing here is only the nearest neighbor. So basically what I'm doing on this line of code is I'm trying to find which health site, which, sorry for my language, which one health site, okay, is closest to the centroid. And, and it's actually going to filter it out for me. Uh, and then I use it uh, downstream in the data, and that is it. So let me show you what we have now. So now for each health district, I have the centroid, which is in green, and I also have the nearest health site to the centroid. So now in our strategy, we now know the health sites, which are currently not appropriate for handling our cure, but we now know that, okay, these are the health sites that we need to upgrade. We need to do a bit of you know, investing in these health sites to give them all the equipment that they need so that they will better serve the people uh, in that specific health district, okay? And again, R is a wonderful language, folks. You know, it's just like magic. You know, the functions are already made for you. You just download the package, you use the functions, and then that is it, you know? Uh, so yeah, let me actually show you. Uh, yeah, everything else. So you see, there's a there's a red dot next to the green dot. So yeah, these are the the, the health sites that we want to target. Uh, and actually, we have a health site here, you know, that is very close to the centroid, you know. And actually, I think I saw one that was even closer. It was exactly on it. Uh, but we're not going to spend time to 
to look at it. When you run the code yourself at home, you can definitely uh, try to, to, to look for, you know, for it. Okay, so step two of our strategy is great. Yay, you know, we now know the, the health uh, facilities that we need to upgrade. Next, we want to find out, uh, actually, let me go back to this. No, even though we were able to find, oh yeah, I guess it's this one here. Yes, so yeah, we found it. So you see, you can't even see the green one. So it's there. Okay, so even if we were able to find the health facilities that we need to upgrade, uh, you know, which is the closest health facility to the centroid. Is this still optimal in all cases? Because there may be cases where, you know, you have a situation, you know, where uh, even though it's the closest to the centroid, it is still kind of far. And we're going to get back to it to see the implications of having a situation like that. Okay, we, we're going to get back to it in a second. But here, what I want to do is, in the health districts that have appropriate health sites, so basically the first red dots, you know, those dots that meant that, hey, these health sites are okay, everything is perfect. We want to find out, even though these health sites are appropriate, are they optimally located? Are they in places that people can easily uh, access? You know, so the fact that they have all the equipment and all that doesn't mean that, you know, when it comes to geography, that they are in good places. So let's try to kind of uh, find that. So I create what we call a buffer. So a buffer is essentially a circle that you draw around a point uh, in, in spatial analysis, right? So it has many applications. So my wife, for example, uh, who is here, uh, she introduced herself earlier for those of you who just came, uh, she worked uh, for a few years in the, in the, in the world of telecommunication. So mobile phone telecommunication. So when you have a cell phone tower, for example, you know, uh, a buffer for that cell phone tower uh, basically talks about the coverage of the area for that cell phone tower. And the strategy here is you need to know what the buffer around that uh, cell phone tower is so that you can decide on where to put the other uh, or the next cell phone tower so that you have optimal coverage, right? And again, there are so many different uh, uh, applications of that. So what we're going to do is for each centroid, because we said that the centroids were the most optimal or the most ideal locations, we're going to see if these appropriate health sites are at, are at most within 50 kilometers of the centroid. And, and again, this is really uh, something that, that was chosen arbitrarily. You know, uh, you can change these values when you get the code. But we're going to say that even if a health district has good health sites, if they are too far from the centroid, then we still need to do something about these health districts. So the fact that you have a good health site is not enough. Basically, it has to be in a good place as well. Okay. So I create a buffer of 50 kilometers and I am going to map it. Okay, so now you see we are focusing on the health districts that have you know good health sites. Look at this health district, for example. It has a lot of good health sites, but they are all kind of in one place, you know. So the people who live here, they're going to have a hard time accessing it. Okay, uh, so. For these, we still need to kind of look at those inappropriate, you know, health sites that are closest to, the, to that centroid, and we're still going to try to upgrade them, okay? Uh, because our country has a lot of money, so we can do that, right? So that's an example. Here's another example, you know, where you have good health sites, but they are kind of far from the most ideal place. So maybe we could do something there as well and upgrade one health site that is closer to that centroid. And this is another big example in San Pedro. There's a harbor here. There's a city here called San Pedro, right? But the centroid is actually far. So all the good health sites are close to the sea. This is the Gulf of Guinea, by the way, okay? And, and you see the people that are living right here, they will have a hard time getting to uh, the health site. So we need to do something about it, basically. So uh, what we learned from this section is not all health districts that have a good health site and uh, not all of them are really fine because uh, some of them still need some upgrading, all right? So uh, basically what I do is I try to filter them out 
uh, and I kind of identified them. So these are basically the health district that still need, oh, I hope there's not gonna be any disconnection again, like earlier. Okay, we were able to find a solution. So, uh, okay, all right, so I'm, I'm gonna to try to do it. That was line 195. Okay. So let, let me go ahead and um, restart my R session again. Let me rerun everything. So there's, there's no long running R code here. So this should be done within a few seconds. Um, and I, I sound like a broken record, but once again, the joys of running code live. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Okay, there we are. So I basically just identified, you know, those health, uh, health districts. So these were supposed to be good at first because they had some good health sites, but now we realize that they still need some upgrading, you know, just to have optimal location. All right, so if there are good health sites that need upgrading, what are the good health sites that do not need upgrading? The ones that are perfectly fine, like we don't need to do anything about those health sites. Uh, so again, it's just basically some filtering, okay, uh, in the tidyverse, it's just some filtering. So at the end of the day, folks, you know, compared to the very first map that we looked at, where there were many, many uh, red, uh, red dots all over the map, there are only just a handful of health sites that don't need any intervention from us as the Ministry for Health. Just a handful, okay? There are kind of a few here, you know, and that's the big Abidjan region that I talked about. But outside that, there's basically only one. And of course, we expect these places to be perfectly fine because that's where the capital city is. Uh, you know, but that's the only one essentially. So there's a lot of work to do. Of course, you were excited. You know, you threw up, you threw off a party for being designated as a ministry for health. But hey, there's a there's a lot of work to do now. So let's. Um, try to uh, continue. Okay, so based on everything that we've done so far, okay, what are the shortlisted health sites that we are gonna work with? And this would include the health sites that are okay, they're appropriate, and the health sites that we are trying to upgrade. So uh, we wanna find, we wanna see a map of all the health sites that we are gonna work with once all the upgrading is done. Again, it's basically some filtering and some binding of data but this is what's gonna look like. So in our strategy, if everything goes well, all of these are the health sites, the health facilities that people will be able to have access to the Cure Act. You know, the blue ones are the ones that are already okay before the strategy. The orange ones are the ones that need upgrading. So of course, the plan now is to make all the orange dots, uh, is to, uh, the plan is to turn them to blue which means that they are okay, they have all the infrastructures, uh, all the infrastructure needed for storing and handling the cure, okay? So it was an entire process, but we were able to get to this, okay? But of course, we start to work with the blue ones first, because again, the pandemic already broke out. So whatever we can do right now, uh, of course, we're gonna do it. All right, so now we've moved to the last part of our strategy. Now that we've been able to identify you know, where we need to do some capacity building, okay, and uh, where we don't need to do anything, okay. The next one is risk assessment. Now, uh, I would like to apologize uh, beforehand because uh, I promised, if, for those of you who read the flyer, I said that you would be able to, to apply whatever I'm doing here to a country of your choice, maybe your own country. But in that third part, I used data which was not available online. Again, I told you about uh, my close connection with an epidemiologist who gave me the data. If you are able to find data for each health district in your country or for each region, okay, then you will be able to replicate this as well. Uh, so again, this is not data that is, uh, I haven't been able to find it. Maybe you, you will be able to find something that is publicly available. Uh, the data that I saw was for the entire country. So number of, X, Y, Z in Kenya, in Uganda, in Burkina Faso, in Benin, uh, but I wasn't able to see online, you know, data for number of X, Y, Z for this region, that region, that region within a country. Okay, so let's do some risk assessment. 
It's a pandemic, it is spreading. So we need to calculate some densities, okay? So uh, 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 the density is a measure of how clustered people are. And, you know, if people are very much clustered, if the density of the population is high in a health district, then there's a higher risk because people are closer together and there's a higher risk for the spreading of the disease. So even though we, you know, that previous map that we looked at, we now know all the health facilities we're gonna work with, but on the priority list, they are not equal. So we need to find out which health districts we should prioritize and start sending the cure there, or maybe start upgrading the facilities there if we need to do some upgrading before, uh, first. Uh, that's basically what we need to do, okay? All right, so let's look at the code that was written for that and the, the, the corresponding maps. So there's another great function uh, in, in the SF package called ST area. ST area will take a polygon and will just calculate the area, just like that, very easy. Uh, uh, now the, the, uh, the coordinate reference system or that I'm using, okay, uh, means that when I calculate the area, I'm going to get it in square meters. So I just divided by 1 million to get it in square kilometers, which I believe is something that we uh, are more familiar with. And to calculate the density, I just divide the population of that health district, which is the data I was referring to, which I wasn't able to find uh, publicly. And I just divide it by the area. Okay, so that's essentially what I do here. And now I want to show that this first one. Look at that. So this may make you think that the density is the same everywhere, you know, the same everywhere, and you only have a higher density in the Abidjan region, okay? Uh, but that is not really the case. The reason why the map is like this is because these places have really, really, really high densities compared to everything else. So if you're just looking at the map, you would just think that, hey, well, I think that this is kind of low everywhere else, but that's not necessarily the case, okay? This is because of uh, a big difference in the densities across health districts. So to, to solve this problem, you can just specify your own gradient intervals, you know, uh, because uh, the, the package here, which is Tmap, uh, is going to try to have, uh, you know, uh, intervals that are, that are equal, but you don't necessarily need them to be equal. You can specify your own interval and then you will get a better sense of what is actually going on. Oh no, not again. <laughs> okay, instead of rerunning everything, I'm just going to try, okay, to increase this. And I can still zoom in here anyways. Okay, maybe I should have done that. I would have saved a few minutes. But yeah, now you can see a better picture of what is happening. So the darker colors are where people are more clustered together. So these are higher risk places. The lighter colors, people are not so much clustered together. So they are lower risk. So uh, that's essentially what we're doing here. And uh, sorry, I think when I did it, I lost the... The line where I was, yeah, number three, yeah, basically that's where I was. Okay, so now we're going to compute what I call the influence index. Uh, if you read the leaflet, uh, it was said on the leaflet that uh, this was a consulting project that I worked on for a company here in the USA, and it was not even related to healthcare. So I kind of readapted it to healthcare, so we, we would all kind of, you know, uh, uh, you know understand what is going on, especially because we are going through a situation like that uh, in the world. Uh, so the influence index is an index that I kind of came up with, you know, uh, for that particular project that I worked on. And essentially what it is is, uh, okay, let me actually show you, I'm gonna run and then explain. Uh, but, but basically I, I go back to a buffer of 50 kilometers. So for each, uh, for each centroid, okay, or for each health facility in this case, uh, I draw a circle with a radius of 50 kilometers around it. And I look at the, uh, you know, the different densities that this specific health district, uh, health site influences. Uh, now, let me show you the map. And I think it's actually going to be a little more telling. But before that, if I want, based on that influence index, if I want to find out what the top 20 
health science that we should focus on first before moving to other health science. If I want to look at what the top 20 are, lo and behold, what's going on here? All 20 health sites are within the Abidjan region, okay? And these are the, the unfortunate effects of lack of decentralization in the country, you know? So when everybody tries to go to the big city and they leave all the other places in the country, this is what you end up with. So for the top 20 places that you need to target, you know, the, the, the data or the, the strategy that we implemented said, hey, all 20 should just be here. So basically all the other people who are sick everywhere else, they should just be left like that if you're only focusing on the top 20 or if you only have money for 20, you see. Now let's take another look for the top 100. Check what's happening. Even for top 100, we are still in the same region. Can you imagine that? You know, because this is so polarizing. You know, these these regions are so polarizing that you know they basically uh, cancel out anything else in the country. So the top hundred should actually be in the same district or in the same you know greater region, if you want, uh, which is kind of weird. And a good government wouldn't would actually try to do something else. But when we go to top two hundred, okay. That's when we start seeing other places, like you can see, you know, there's a bit of green in other places. Okay. And now this is where I'm going to end before the, uh, uh, you know, and this is where I'm going to end my discussion on the maps before going back to the slides and, and, and finish the presentation. But I was talking about the, the uh, influence index. Uh, I would like you to look at this green circle here, which is a buffer around one health site. You see, this circle actually touches three different health districts. So it influences this health district to a certain level, this health district to another level, and this health district here to a, a smaller level. So basically what I came up with, you know, for the influence indexes, I multiply the area of intersection, the area of overlap, okay, in square kilometer by the density of each overlapping spaces, and then I sum them up. And when I do that, this gives me an idea of how much this specific health site influences the people around, okay? And this is what I'm using to rank when I say top 100, top 20, and stuff like that. So I believe that it is easy to see. Uh, I think I had some good examples somewhere. Okay, well, this is still good. Uh, but I believe that you will see that, uh oh that, yeah, right here that the health site whose buffer is here, okay, will definitely have less influence than the health site with this buffer because, you know, much more of the overlap occurs in a place with a higher density. And even though you have these two other, you know, overlapping areas, but much of it is in a place of higher density. So it makes this health site here more influent, you know, in terms of impact around. Okay, so again, I just called it the influence index, and that's basically what I, I use to do the ranking. Okay, guys, uh, let's uh, finish this. So risk assessment, now we have a roadmap. We were able to make an assessment of the state of things. Number two, we were able to identify the health districts that were fine. We were also able to identify the, the health facilities that needed some upgrading to have optimal uh, coverage of the entire country, and we also assess the risk. And uh, now we know in what, in which order we should basically uh, uh, concentrate our efforts. You know, based on that influence index. But there are many things that are not considered, and I'm pretty sure that some of you, especially who are experts in the health industry, maybe you did not agree with some of the things that I did, like some of the uh, strategies that I decided to embark on. Uh, but that is fine in a strategy. Uh, especially when it's in a team, there are many opposing voices. And, you know, we need to think about all of the options and, and pick the option that is the best one. So there are many things that were, were not considered and they're extremely important, you know. So if we were really the ministers for health, we would basically consider them. So what are they? Number one, you know, we talked about upgrading facilities. But guys, I believe that you, uh, I, I believe that you agree with the fact that Sometimes building a new facility altogether is less costly 
and quicker than upgrading, you know? And it, it's in a case by case basis, you know? Maybe some health districts have some health sites that, that can be upgraded easily, others don't. So in this case, you know, in this presentation, we just considered, let's just upgrade everything. And we didn't even think about building new facilities. And sometimes this is the best choice. So this was not considered at all in this uh, presentation. Number one, you know, I was able to find road network data. And I was actually going to add an, uh, a spatial analysis using optimal routing. Uh, but for the sake of time, that would have been too long. But it would actually be very great to do a study on optimal dispatch of the cure. You know, the cure comes from uh, uh, arrives in the country in Abidjan, which is the main city. So what would be the optimal dispatch through the country? And uh, this is something that R can actually do fairly easily as well. Now, the centroid method might not be the best. And I think I gave you an example. We said that the most ideal location for, for a health facility is the centroid. But that's not necessarily the case. As I said, the centroid may be in the middle of a river or a rainforest where nobody lives or something like that. But we just, for the sake of the presentation, assume that. And some health districts may be so small that building and upgrading a health facility might not be ideal. You know, some health districts are very small and we may want to save money by having the people there travel to the nearby health districts that are still closed, you know, uh, to, to get their cure. So this is not something that was considered as well. And uh, the last one is many appropriate health sites are clustered. So you may not consider all appropriate health sites to send the cure there because, you know, the, the cure is in limited supply, right? So in all the appropriate health sites that are clustered, maybe you want to pick just a few and supply them with the cure uh, that people will have access to instead of supplying the cure to all good health sites because they are so close together. So that might be a waste, so to speak. All right, so, and of course, there are many other things that were not considered, and, and I hope that, you know, uh, in the discussions, you will be, uh, you will share some of those things that you kind of thought about. Uh, that would be great. Okay, do you want to do the same for your country? So the country and uh, administrative shapefiles, the, you know, the spatial data, uh, I got it from the human, Humanitarian Data Exchange, okay, which is a really wonderful website. Now the health site points, I don't know if Mark is still in the, in the room, but uh, this is the, health, uh, the website that he manages. And uh, uh, we have this wonderful uh, package, Afri Health Sites, that was developed by Afri Mapa, uh, which allows you to very easily pull uh, the health sites data uh, just with one very quick line of code. And in my code, I actually do that. So when you study my code, you'll be able to see it. And I mentioned road network, even though I didn't use it in my, in my presentation, uh, but this website has wonderful data on the road network in your country. So if you want to push the analysis forward, uh, you can actually add the road network to it as well. Thank you very much for your audience. Thank you so much Luna, for that awesome, awesome presentation. Um, there was a question on the chat section about shapefile. This person asked, Romaine asked, where can I find